not muted. That would be me. Okay, that was you, Margaret. That has that feedback, by the way. Okay, all right. So we are going to get started. Are you going to open it up? Yep, yeah, Georgia, you're good. Yeah, I'm good. Okay, here we go. Oh, people are coming out tonight. I can't see how many people are there. Georgia, you can text me. It's, uh, we're approaching 500. Oh my God. Remember my first time, three or 300? <laughs> and I was way wrong. <laughs> yeah, we, um, uh, we'll, we'll let, wait um, for, you know, for it to slow down or to hit the 3000 um, mark. Okay. okay. Approaching 800. Okay, I've turned off the chat now. Thanks, Renee. Renee, because we still have people loading in, um, I know it's just after six, but it's just taking a little bit of time for them to load. We're at 800. So I'm just gonna recommend we, we uh, wait a few more minutes. Sure, that makes sense. Um... I'll, I'll keep my, uh, my eye on it and give the signal to go. Well, you're the, co you're the one starting, so. <laughs> Let me know when you want. I'm also, uh, so welcome to all the families that are joining us. We're just waiting for everyone to join. Uh, and I'm noticing uh, already some questions and I'll just encourage you to um, maybe wait until we get through some of the presentation because I believe we will be answering some of these questions for you throughout the presentation. This evening, um, we have schools from learning centers two and three joining us to answer questions. This meeting is for grade eight to nine transitions. Uh, this will be, uh, the recording will be posted on the guidance page of the TDSB website uh, next week. Um, so we're just waiting for some other families to join us and we'll get started in a couple of minutes. Okay, Renee, I think uh, the numbers loading in are, are have slowed down. So I think we can actually begin. Okay, wonderful. And so I... uh, good evening to our grade eight students and their families. Thank you so Shandhi much. Grade eight, state, grade eight students are on families. Oh, uh, one of our interpreters is uh, coming through in the audio. Margaret, I wonder if you can help us out there. If you can just uh, uh, be patient for one moment, uh, families. It was the Urdu interpreter. Okay, so I'm gonna start again. Uh, good, good evening uh, to our grade eight students and families. Uh, I wanna welcome you this evening for our top 10 tips and considerations for the transitions to high school. My name is Georgia Gallagher and I am a retired secondary principal from the TDSB, uh, currently working uh, back with the board um, in the areas of academic pathways and supporting our guidance department. Um, I'd like to introduce some of our uh, members of the panel, uh, but 
prior to that, we will do our land acknowledgement. Uh, we acknowledge we are hosted on the lands of the Mississaugas of the Anishinaabe, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy and the Wendat. We also recognize the enduring presence of all First Nations, Métis and, and Inuit peoples. Thank you. As part of our um, uh, planning for this evening, I want to acknowledge the uh, individuals who have been key. Uh, Andrew Gold, uh, who is one of our associate directors, he will be joining us tomorrow. Uh, Karen Faulkner, who is our associate director. In particular, she works with us for Academic Pathways. Renee Rawlings, who is our coordinator for guidance and career development, and myself, uh, who I've already introduced. This evening, uh, we also have, uh, to our delight, three of our program coordinators, and these are TDSB staff that work to coordinate various programs for the board. So welcome to Jason Toe, Academic Pathways and Secondary Mathematics, Pat Davies, who takes care of e-learning and virtual secondary school student support, and Kirsten Johnson, our French as a second language and classical and international languages. So thank you. They will be uh, involved in helping answer some questions as we go forward. Um, I also want to recognize all of our secondary guidance counselors uh, who are here from all of these schools. Uh, they've volunteered their evening for this presentation and the one at seven uh, to help answer your questions uh, that are uh, taking place right now through the uh, Q&A at the bottom of your screen. We couldn't do this without uh, their support and they of course are the experts about their programming at their school. So thank you so much. Um, we, we really, really appreciate um, everything that you're doing. And I'm just not sure, uh, uh, Karen Faulkner, have you come onto the call? Yes, I have, and Welcome. apologies. Uh, yeah. I used the link that went into the webinar instead of the panelist link. So thrilled uh, to see everyone, thrilled at the thousand people who are online. My name is Karen Faulkner and I'm the uh, Associate Director for the Toronto District School Board and um, an avid grade eight to nine transition fan. I think uh, it's one of the most important choices that they make. People think it's so important at kindergarten. I would argue this choice is far more um, impactful uh, because you have choice and you have choice not just based on teachers, you have choice based on types of schools. You have many different program offerings in our school board. We are rich with choice and you need to make decisions that uh, suit you as students and that families can support. You know, closer to home and further from home is an important consideration. It's bien français or studying in English are other considerations. And I know that as you benefit from the expertise of the people who are about to speak to you, including uh, Principal Gallagher and uh, Dr. Rollins, as well as uh, Madame Johnson, I know that you will begin to understand um, what different looking high schools look like in, uh, in the learning centers. And so it's what they look like and sound like. The difference for you as students tonight is you won't get to know what they feel like. It is not the same to visit virtually as it is to go in person. So in this very difficult year that I don't think will happen again next year, that's my optimistic side. I'm sticking with it too. Um, I ask you to try and soak up as much as you can in the next hour and uh, know that there are many people who will answer questions for you. You don't have to get it all in this time here now. Thank you so much to the people who've put this together and I wish you the best of luck as you make your choices going forward. Merci et bonne soirée. Oh, thanks so much uh, and again that's our Associate Director Karen Faulkner. Um, I will be passing things over to uh, Renee Rawlings now, who will take us through um, a couple of slides. Uh, I just want to emphasize um, at, the, at the start that our presentation this evening is meant to augment what is already taking place uh, in uh, your elementary school, but also through the open houses that you've been uh, likely visiting through virtual means this year. Uh, so some of this information you may already know and that's great it should emphasize that for you uh, but again it's not meant to replace what is already going on so without further ado uh renee thank you georgia 
Um, so welcome everybody. We'll get started on our top 10 tips and considerations for your transition to high school. And up first is homeschool. Uh, the first question that many families often have is what is my homeschool and how can I find out what my homeschool is? Well, we have updated the TDSB website to help families search schools. So to find your school, you can simply go to the TDSB site and click on find your school or type the link on the screen. And then when you're in this, on this page, you can select your school by address. And that's how you'll find out what your designated school is based on your address. And this is what is known as your home school. As you can see, you can also search for schools by school name and by program. And many of you have probably already done so in searching for some programs and some specialized programs that you might have been interested in um, for next year. Optional attendance has been a source of many questions for grade eight families. So I'll take a moment to review some key pieces that I'm sure have already been reviewed by your grade eight schools, but wouldn't hurt to um, talk about all over again. So I'm going to answer a few of the following questions. What specialized programs or alternative schools are there? How does the French immersion and extended French pathway work? What about applying to specialized programs or applying to regular programs at schools that are not your home school? And which schools are closed to optional attendance? So on the screen are our schools, uh, our specialized programs in the TDSB. As you can see, we have specialized programs in the areas of arts, athletics, STEM, leadership, and IB. And as I mentioned before, on your finder school, you can search for them by program. So for each specialized program, they have their own admission and pro uh, application process. This could include um, an audition, interviews, exams, a portfolio, a tryout. But to find out what each school needs particularly, please visit the school website for details about their admission and application process. Now, some deadlines may have already passed, um, but some are still coming up. And hopefully you had an opportunity to take a look at that when you received your first communication from us on November 4th. So of course, another question is, well, which schools are closed to optional attendance? The following schools are closed to optional attendance for their regular program. And this information is available uh, online for you as well in our optional attendance page. All right, up next is our TDSB programs and pathways for French immersion and extended French. So many of you know that in high school, students qualify for a certificate of bilingual studies in French immersion upon the completion of 10 credits. And they qualify for that certificate in extended French upon the completion of seven credits. Students may continue with their French immersion or extended French program um, at their designated pathway school. And the site that's online right now for you to see is where you would click to see which school has been designated as your French pathway school. Students who've moved into the pathway area of a new French immersion or extended French secondary school may transfer there directly. So it would not be considered optional attendance. And students who would like to attend a different French immersion or extended French secondary school that's outside of their designated pathway school would have to apply to that school on optional attendance. So of course, the next question is, which schools are closed to optional attendance for French immersion and extended French? And those are the ones that are listed on the screen right there. And I'll give you a moment to take a look. So the TDSB is so proud to have so many alternative schools. Uh, our alternative schools are safe, highly engaged, smaller school environments. They use non-traditional hands-on approaches to learn the required Ontario Ministry of Education curriculum. And each school has a distinct identity and focus such as democratic education, holistic learning, physical art, mindful living, entrepreneurship, social justice, community outreach, the, li outreach, the list goes on. And these schools are ideal for students seeking an alternative to mainstream education and who want to take an active role in their own learning. 
TDSB alternative schools are open and free to any resident of Toronto and space in, in alternative schools is limited and students can apply to attend on optional attendance. The application process is different for each alternative school. And on the screen right now are our secondary alternative schools. So what are some of the key dates for optional attendance? Uh, so January 29th is when the optional attendance forms are due at the secondary school. The first week of February is when optional attendance lottery takes place if required. So that's for schools who are, um, who are not close to optional attendance. If they aren't able to accept everyone who has applied, they would run a lottery um, to see who can attend. On February 12th is the deadline for parents and guardians of students to be informed of the status of their application. And February 26th is the deadline for course selection to be um, provided to the secondary schools. And you'd be doing that through my blueprint. So I'll pass this on to uh, Georgia now to talk about grade nine course selection. So uh, I, I actually had a chance to take a look at some of the questions in the Q&A and uh, we will actually get to some of those uh, questions again, as Renee uh, mentioned, uh, through our uh, presentation this evening. Uh, but I wanted just to speak about some changes uh, that we've been working on in the TDSB going forward. And one of those items is academic pathways. Um, in the last number of years, we've been working toward a full academic pathway for students in grade nine. And in September, that's going to be a reality. So whereas in previous years, or if you have older children, uh, some of you your uh, children would have made a choice between academic and applied. Uh, going forward, uh, that choice now is just academic. And we've been preparing our schools uh, to receive students and to ensure um, that they meet uh, the needs of each learner um, as the needs uh, are required. And the courses uh, that we, we have had applied in before are math, science, English, French and geography. And those are all compulsory courses. Uh, so going forward next year, there is no choice to be made. Students will move directly into an academic pathway uh, and uh, they will be taught uh, at the, everybody will be taught the same. For, for students coming uh, from grade eight, it really will be just like always, um, the way that your classes are currently uh, with mul multitude of learners with strengths in different areas. Uh, so that is that is what will be coming forth. The um, the time when you will be making course selections uh, for uh, grade nine uh, will will not open up actually until after January. So when we get back after the holiday, that's when that begins. A uh, couple of considerations, though, that you you may want to think about. You do have a couple of options as you go into uh, grade nine, and one of those options is: Do you want a technology course or do you want um, you know, business studies? Um, are you looking uh, at perhaps taking family studies as one of your areas of study? And when you attend the various open houses of the secondary schools, they're going to lay out for you as grade eight learners and their families, what is on offer um, at each and every school. Not every school has all of the options available. So for example, in the arts, some, some schools, you know, might not have vocal music, but they may have instrumental. So you'll be looking at uh, something in the arts, you'll be looking at something business or technology, uh, family studies, um, and then we have uh, physical education as well. And that rounds out the full eight courses uh, that you'll be taking next year. So that is the same for each and every school, uh, that same, same process. It doesn't matter if you're going into a specialized program, it doesn't matter if you're going into uh, French immersion, um, you, you will still be making those choices. Um, and each of the, the high schools uh, has already got that established in terms of what those choices will be. Um, I'm gonna move us forward, um, uh, Renee, just in terms of our using my blueprint uh, video. So we, we have this video uh, that it's just a couple of minutes, but we are going to show it to you uh, because uh, 
your children are going to be using this application that's uh, used actually throughout North America um, to be making their selections for uh, grade nine. Uh, this outlines what that process is and it certainly students using their TDSB login can go into My Blueprint from home. Uh, you as a parent uh, can oversee what's taking place. And this is a planner that is used right on up uh, through to grade 12. Um, and so it's the first time that our uh, younger students or grade eight students are introduced to it. So Renee, if you could hit play and I'll speak on the other end of it. Hello, and welcome to the My Blueprint course selection video series. In this video, we are going to show you how a grade 8 student with TDSB will complete their course selections. Start by visiting www.tdsb.on.ca slash find dash your forward slash school. Select by address. Enter your street name. Note, you will not need to add your full address, simply the street name. Click search. This will display your destination secondary school. If you are looking to apply for a specialized program, you may also locate your secondary school by searching using the by program option. Upon determining your destination secondary school, simply visit www.myblueprint.ca forward slash TDSB. Click the green school account login button and enter your TDSB credentials to log into your MyBlueprint account. Upon login, simply click High School from the left-hand navigation menu. Click Add Plan and select your destination high school from the drop-down menu. Once course selection is open for TDSB students, upon login, students will see the course selection steps appear at the top of their high school grid. Step one is to add courses. Click either a subject name or the Add Course button to begin exploring opportunities within that school. Click Add Course to add this to your plan. TDSB students entering Grade 9 are expected to select 8 total courses plus 2 alternate courses. Once your student has added all of the courses to their plan, click the blue Review Course Selections button. Step two is to officially review the selections. Once the review is complete, select Submit Selections. Upon submission, students are notified of a successful submission to their destination secondary school. Once students have submitted their selections, they may wish to return to the high school plan. Students will notice that the course selection checklist now displays the submission date and time. Students are no longer able to make adjustments to the submitted courses. If changes are needed, students will need to speak to their classroom teacher. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or concerns surrounding My Blueprint, please speak with your student's teacher or email us at support at myblueprint.ca. That's awesome. So thank you so much uh, for just having a quick look at that. And really, my blueprint is that easy. Um, there's so much that you can learn, uh, just even, uh, you know, post-secondary programs through that application. And I would encourage the grade eight students uh, and their families to explore it to its fullest potential, because there's so much that you can do. Um, the, the next thing I want to discuss uh, uh, is special education. And the three items that are of particular importance are the process for IPRC students and offers a placement. And those, those would be uh, our gifted students, uh, students uh, who have a physical handicap, developmental disability programs, uh, physically handicapped programs, um, as well as learning disabilities, uh, et cetera. We also um, uh, wanted to talk briefly about the process for non-IPRC students. So students who do not have a formal identification in special education, but are receiving uh, additional supports in their grade eight school. And then also in our general academic supports that are available in grade nine. 
So uh, the transition for students who have an IPRC, so that's a formal identification of special education, um, every uh, grade eight school will be going through a review. And through that review process, recommendations are made for placement. And your placement uh, would uh, correspond with uh, the, your identification. So for example, if you're currently in a grade eight school with a, your child has a developmental disability, uh, as part of that review process, you will be uh, provided, uh, you know, the options, uh, you know, in terms of supports going forward and offered a school for placement. Part of what it is recommended is that you reach out to your schools and understand what the secondary schools in your areas are uh, that have the programs for developmental disability. Uh, typically the offers of placement, because not every school in secondary has the program uh, and or the supports in place, uh, and we have to balance out the numbers. So the placement offers uh, for developmental disability come that way. And, and typically, and, and being a principal with a, a DD program, uh, we welcome in our students in advance of the school year because it's a huge, big transition uh, for, for what's well, big transition for all grade eight students, but in particular, um, our students uh, with developmental disability. And so one of the things that I strongly recommend is, is finding out what is the typical pathway from your current school, what is the typical high school, um, and, and seeing if you can make a connection in terms of a, uh, as a parent uh, uh, with, with the school to understand better what, what is offered through that program. For students who are uh, identified as gifted and want to continue in a gifted program, uh, this is uh, determined by your residential address. And so certain addresses will feed to certain schools. And throughout the TDSB, we have uh, programs in our uh, high schools uh, for gifted. Um, in terms of physically handicapped, um, we, we have programs in some schools that are designated barrier-free schools. Uh, and this is so that students can uh, move uh, freely from floor to floor and not be impeded by physical barriers such as stairs. For any of our students who are in grade eight who currently have, uh, don't have an identification but are receiving a special education support, the strongest recommendation is, is to reach out to the school that your child is going to be attending and ask to speak with one of the guidance counselors. And they're going to uh, ensure that number one, they're aware uh, of the needs of your child. Uh, but number two, if additional supports need to be put in place, they're on top of that before September actually takes place. Typically in the spring, uh, the, uh, within each learning network, we have what are called transition meetings and the grade eight staff meet with the uh, staff at the high schools and we discuss any of those additional supports that are needed for the students who are moving moving forward. Uh, the academic supports typical in grade nine uh, would be through additional support through the classroom teacher. Uh, it may uh, be a learning strategies course and or a um, one that is in, in general uh, support or one that's specific for students who are in, uh, in an IPRC situation. Uh, and again, it's your guidance counselor at the grade eight, at the grade nine school, that's going to help make sure that you get those supports that are needed. Uh, and in addition to that, the schools, we have student success teams that work with uh, our grade nine students. We have our guidance department. And so one of the big worries and part of what we've heard quite a bit about uh, is, gosh, my, my child has bought some gaps because of grade seven and the school's being closed and now they're virtually attending for grade eight. Um, we're well aware and I just I want to reassure parents and I want to reassure students everything is going to be okay. We're going to loop back and make sure we fill in those gaps for you uh, and to make sure that you meet your potential. 
So I, I, I don't want you to be fretting about that over the summer. I also know that our continuing ed department is planning um, summer school uh, to help fill some gaps as well. Uh, so I would just say, you know, the most important thing this year uh, is doing your very best if you're a grade eight student um, and parents, you know, keep, try to keep your, your grade eight child motivated um, and engaged in their learning uh, so that you can, you know, ensure the, the most smooth transition next year in grade nine. Renee, do you want to move forward to the next slide? So a couple of things that I just want to just talk about is what to expect in high school, both as a student and as a parent. So some of you as parents, you, you've got kids who have gone through high school and so you're a bit more seasoned, but for many of you on today's call, uh, it may be your first child heading into high school and it's a bigger place uh, and it's, you know, it, it's always a little bit of a worry. Um, but, I, but I want you to know as a high school principal, um, the most important kids in every school are those grade nine students. And collectively as a faculty, we take all of your kids under our wing and make sure uh, that they're well taken care of. And I don't mean just the academic support, I also mean uh, the social emotional support some of you may be making a decision maybe to break away from your French immersion path that you're currently on and maybe are feeling a bit of trepidation about going back to your homeschool uh, and not having your same group of friends and or branching out to a specialized program and not you're not going where the rest of your class is heading um, for September. A uh, couple of things as a student that that really, really important um, is make sure right from the get go um, that if you're if you're feeling a little bit anxious or you're feeling a little bit worried that you speak with your folks talk to your parents and and or your guardians and make sure you make somebody aware of what you're what you're feeling uh, your your parents uh, as and your guardians as uh, the adults in your life can make a call to the school so that the schools are aware of what's going on but for the most part for students, uh, it, what, what you'll find different is the amount of freedom that you have. It's a little bit different than grade eight uh, because we, we, as you move into high school, you have more responsibility, but you also have a little bit more freedom. You are attending um, uh, classes with different teachers. So you can expect that rather than, you know, maybe having two or three different teachers in grade eight, you're going to have eight different teachers by the time you finish grade nine. Uh, you are going to be studying by way of subjects. And I mentioned those subjects earlier on. Uh, and, you know, other than that, uh, you're gonna be in a bigger place, uh, but it's gonna be very much the same. We're one big TDSB family. And so some of the things that you're currently doing in grade eight are gonna be exactly the same in grade nine. As for parents, one of the things that you're gonna notice as your kids move into uh, high school is they're not gonna be talking to you as much. And that is a typical piece that takes place as kids move uh, in the direction of young adulthood. And that, uh, you know, dinner time conversation that you might have uh, with them in elementary changes a little bit. Um, and it's important for you to understand that. Um, but I would also suggest to you that if you're concerned or worried, you need to phone the, the high school. You need to speak with somebody at the high school and just to make sure if, if, you're, if you're fretting about something, uh, worried. Uh, but it is a time where uh, students uh, navigating their education are going to want to have a little bit more time on their own. They're going to want to make their own decisions. Uh, they're going to want to have, you know, enforce a little bit more independence as they uh, navigate high school. And this is just normal teenage stuff that happens. So don't be don't be worried about that. the The schools are are here to help support the parents and their and their kids as they navigate uh, the high school experience. And for you as a parent. Uh, you're always welcome in the schools. We want you to, to call us. We want you to speak with us and we wanna be a partner in the education with, with your child. Uh, but I would say also 
they are teenagers and you're going to notice some changes and those changes are you know tried and true and and when they come out the other end as they walk that stage at graduation uh and have fulfilled um you know their uh you know their capacity as a learner and uh that pride that you'll see as they make their way across that stage uh it it will bring such pride to you so uh those are my comments just in terms of what to expect in high school uh, for both students and parents. I'm going to pass things over to uh, Renee, um, who's just going to go over. Um, oh, actually, I guess I'm going to just talk about a couple of other things here. Uh, sorry, Renee. Uh, uh, for our grade eight students, you're looking at some sample timetables in terms of what you will be taking. We None of us know what is going to happen come September. Uh, right now, we are in a quadmester environment, which is the one on the bottom. Uh, students are taking two courses per quadmester. And by the end of uh, June, all eight courses will have taken place. Some schools are semestered environment, and that's the um, uh, on the left of your screen. Uh, you will see four courses semester one different four courses, semester two. And then we have a number of schools who also remain a uh, non-semestered school. And uh, essentially you would be taking eight courses at a time for each day um, as you navigate through um, uh, your, your school year. We'll just move on to the next slide. Couple of things um, that the board um, is doing right now is trying to sort through uh, what is going to be the landscape for September 2021. And uh, you know, obviously, none of us, you know, know for sure what is taking place. There's some very positive news today about vaccines coming forward and hopefully putting an end to the pandemic as a whole. Um, but one of the things that you know you need to consider um, as a parent is your child's social, emotional, and mental health needs. So some of you are uh, coming into high school, not having been in school, if you've been in, a, in virtual school, and then we had, you know, the, the lockdown last year. Um, one of the things that, you know, I would really encourage is for parents to sit down with their grade eight child and talk through actual transition to high school and talk through some of those things that are on the mind of your child, uh, what's scaring them, what, what's worrying them. Um, and that will be different from whichever place they're coming from, whether they're in a physical building, a bricks and mortar building right now, um, whether or not they're being homeschooled, uh, whether or not uh, they're coming from a virtual school. Uh, but it is, it is really, really important. This pandemic has, uh, you know, really hit our, our young people hard. Uh, and there's, there's going to be some trepidation. And I think one of the things that I would strongly like to recommend is acknowledging that and figuring out how as a family, uh, can we support our child moving forward into grade nine. Uh, and, and on our end as a TDSB, we're sorting through with Toronto Public Health how we can do that safely. Uh, and the board will come forward, uh, you know, in the coming months uh, to, to share with parents, you know, what schooling is gonna look like in September. Uh, but in the meantime, these conversations need to start taking place now. They're already starting to take place in the grade eight schools. Um, and certainly it will be part of what the planning teams uh, at the high schools will be doing as well is sorting through how do we best uh, support the kids coming into grade nine uh, through who have lived through a couple, a year and a half of pandemic. And last thing I want to just talk about, what if my child changes their mind about their ad admission acceptance in a particular school? And this is something that comes up uh, quite, a, quite a bit. Uh, so for example, uh, your child, uh, you know, decided uh, to apply for a specialized program. They're going to the TOPS program at Mark Carneau. Um, and then come, you know, the end of June, uh, they're just like, no, I just want to go to my home school. I changed my mind. A uh, couple of things that you need to be aware of. 
we staff schools based on what kids select uh, by the end of uh, March. And so uh, typically um, there's an expectation that students attend the schools that they say they're going to attend. Um, there, uh, there's some, obviously there are exceptions to that. Uh, and uh, what you would need to do is speak with the home school that you prefer to go back to. Um, at, like the communication piece is important. What I would suggest is that you speak first off with your grade eight uh, principal or vice principal um, and that we work together to try to sort out something that will be suitable for your child. Uh, a couple of things to, to remember though is some of our programs have limited acceptance and it's really important uh, that that you as a parent and you speak with your, your child um, if they're accepting into a program that has limited acceptance uh, that if they say, yeah, I'm going there, um, they're taking the place of someone else. And so it, it's important that you be as sure as you can be uh, when you're making that decision uh, for your grade eight school. A couple of things that just to finish off uh, with this slide, uh, you have a right to attend your home school and that's by your residential address. So the street that you live on and the street number of your house or your apartment, um, um, that will determine what 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 school is your home school. So no, even even you know a couple of questions came up in the Q and A um, uh, about optional attendance. Uh, that is your home school. You don't have to apply to go to your home school. You'll just fill out your course uh, selection through my blueprint, and and off you go. Um, if you're applying for other programs within the TDSB, um, uh, that's where. Uh, admission acceptance uh, comes into play. Uh, I just want to emphasize, uh, I've, I've worked, you know, throughout the TDSB, and I, I can't say enough, the outstanding schools uh, that exist within uh, the TDSB. I also more, more recently have been a principal at a specialized school. And one of the, the very clear and strong messages that I say to our grade eight students and to their parents is grade eight students need to really feel the fire in their belly uh, in terms of where they want to be. And so for, uh, you know, at the end of the day, that's the most important thing. So if through your journey of open houses, uh, you come across a school that you just think, yes, I could see myself here, um, then you really need to listen to that. Um, listen to that voice that's telling you that this is where you want to go. Um, uh, and it may not necessarily be where you as a parent want your child to go, uh, but it is, it is really, really important that that student voice um, be part of the equation in terms of the decisions that are being made uh, about what school to, to attend. Um, it, we're so fortunate in Toronto to uh, have our, our board and our schools and, and, and within our neighborhood and, and elsewhere. Uh, and I, I just have to say that the future for your kids is bright uh, being a TDSB student. Um, and I'm going to pass things on to, to Renee, who's gonna talk about a few other matters. Thank you, Georgia. Um, okay, up next, we're gonna talk about some important dates. Uh, now these dates you would have received in your communication that um, you got on November 4th, and it had a timeline and a checklist and all these dates were here, but we'll just review them for you as well. So between November and December, um, you will have attended or will attend your elementary school's virtual transition event. And elementary schools are doing this in a host of different ways uh, to provide information similar to the information we are providing today, but in a smaller group so they can answer some of your questions more specifically. Between November and January, the secondary schools are hosting their virtual open houses. Many have already happened, but there are still many to come between now and January. And also between November and January, specialized schools have their additional entrance requirements uh, for their programs. So some of those deadlines, as I mentioned before, have passed, some are coming up. So please visit the school's website for information about specific deadlines. On January 11th, that's when the grade eight course selection opens. So many of you might've already been in my blueprint and asking why you can't select courses. And that's because it is not open for course selection just yet. 
secondary schools are preparing all of the courses that they're going to offer to you going into grade nine and all the students from grades uh, 10 through 12. So that will open for grade eight students on January 11th. On January 29th, optional attendance forms are due at the secondary schools. This year we are accepting email, scanned, faxed versions of the optional attendance forms. So um, if you click on the link for the optional attendance form, you'll see that it is a fillable PDF. So you can type it up and save it. And then you can email it to your elementary principal who does have to sign it. And your elementary principal can send it to the secondary school on your behalf, or you can take it there yourselves. You should contact the secondary school to ask how they will be receiving their optional attendance forms because each school is receiving it differently. They may have mail slots. They may have some place that you would come to. Some may direct you to send it to them via email. Connect with the secondary school for details. February 12th is the deadline that parents and guardians will be informed of the status of your optional attendance application. And I looked in the Q&A and one of the questions uh, was if we get into more than two schools, uh, do we have a choice? And the answer is yes. Now remember, you can apply to two specialized programs and two regular programs. So that's a total of four schools on your optional attendance. The elementary principal who signed your forms will be making sure that uh, we'll be keeping track of those schools that you've applied to. And so if you got into, for example, all four, you would certainly have a choice to make. And you'd have to make that choice by February 26th, if not sooner, um, because that's the deadline for your grade eight course selection to be submitted in my blueprint. And as I mentioned before, all these dates you should have sitting in an email that you received from the TDSB on November 4th. Okay, so who do you contact if you have questions? And I'm sure you have many. And uh, I just wanna thank all of our guidance counselors and coordinators who are diligently answering your questions in the Q&A, which is where you should be posting most of your questions. You can also look in the answered section because some of your questions might have already been answered. But if you do have any additional questions after we leave here this evening, if your question is around a specialized school or program, you should contact that high school for details about their specialized program. If you have questions around my blueprint and course selection, you should speak with the staff at your grade eight school. And again, as I mentioned before, course selection has not opened up. So questions and answers around course selection specifically will begin in January. If you have questions around special education offers of placement, you should connect with your grade eight school. And if you have questions around special education or additional academic support that's available in high school, particularly the high schools you're interested in attending, you should contact the high school to find out what supports they have available for your son or daughter. And in terms of some web resources, we mentioned this at the onset of the presentation. We have a Beyond 8 website in the TDSP. Uh, there's a lot of slashes, <laughs> forward slashes to get to it, but we call it Beyond 8. So in TDSP, you'd go to high school, going to high school, Beyond 8. This Beyond 8 site has a lot of web pages with details around the transition from grade eight to grade nine. The video that we showed earlier, the how-to video uh, for a grade eight course selection from My Blueprint is currently housed on the sample timetable page, which also shows you some of those sample timetables that we went over a few slides back. But down at the bottom of that page is this video for how to do your grade eight course selection. And these are two great web resources for you um, as families that are um, dealing with the grade eight to nine transition. Okay, and so with that, I think we have concluded all of the topics that we wanted to cover in our top 10 tips and considerations for transitioning to high school. Um, um, Renee, I'd like I to... If, just before um, uh, we do closing remarks, um, I just wanted to acknowledge that we have a number of our parents uh, viewing this through YouTube Live, and we have had some questions come up through that uh, uh, that 
you know, uh, portal um, that I that I just want to answer uh, at this time, just because they don't have anybody actively answering questions over uh, on YouTube. Um, so one of the questions is um, uh, something that I alluded to before: a child being home during the pandemic, uh, and because of uh, you know they're at high risk, um, and they're and the worry about not being ready for grade nine uh, work. Uh, again, I want to make sure that I reassure parents and students um, that the entire province is going through uh, this, the, the very pandemic. And, and we are so acutely aware um, that, you know, it's, it's been a tough go for, for kids, uh, for teachers, for schools, for families. Um, and we're going to take care of your child come grade nine. Um, the, the Minister of Education has also spoken very publicly about this, um, that, you know, this is a worry that's on the minds of parents. So what I want you to do again is encourage your child uh, to do their very best this year. Um, and when they come into grade nine next year, we may need to help them fill in some gaps um, uh, because we, we want them to meet. Them to meet. So again, if, uh, you know, if, if that is your circumstance, reach out to the grade nine school uh, and uh, make sure that, uh, you know, you, you as a parent are advocating for your child. Um, so question about who do you call for guidance um, uh, at virtual school? Uh, and so parents who have students who are in virtual school, uh, you will have a, a vice principal that is associated with the elementary virtual school. And that should be uh, one of the first places that you ask questions. Um, but all of the virtual school students have already gone through a presentation about transition to um, grade nine. Um, and they've been walked through that already once. But if you, if you reach out to the vice principal there, they're going to um, provide some assistance. Um, right now, we're just working just because there's 17,000 students in virtual school. Um, we're working through some technical glitches around my blueprint and we have a handle on it and we look like we're gonna be moving forward. So their teachers and um, uh, the administrators who are working virtual school are gonna work with those kids uh, who are there. Uh, I think those were the questions that I saw come up. Um, uh, so far. Okay, so thank you, Renee. I just wanted to make sure that I got to that. And I want I appreciate all of the families that are um, tuning in through YouTube this evening. Yes, thank you. And I know that Margaret's been answering some questions in YouTube as well. There are quite a few questions that are very, uh, that are about optional attendance. And I would just encourage you to go to the optional attendance page. Um, there were questions about if you apply to a specialized program under optional attendance and you leave the program, what happens? Please connect with the secondary school. Um, our, uh, our board policy would be that you'd return to your home school. Um, and then someone asked a question, just a lot of details around optional attendance. So I would really encourage you to connect with your elementary school. And if it's more specifically around the other end of optional attendance, once you get in, connect with that secondary school. Um, or that specialized program for details. So with that, um, oops, I think I've gotten myself all the way to the end, but I will close uh, by thanking all of you for staying with us through these top 10 tips and considerations for the transition to high school. I'd like to thank our secondary counselors, our program coordinators, and Margaret Horvath for supporting today's event. And also thank you, Georgia, it's always a pleasure to work with you and present with you. Uh, thank you to all the families and the grade eight students. Uh, we're so excited for you as you begin planning for high school. Good luck and be sure to enjoy this transition to grade nine. I know that it's filled with a lot of stress and anxiety and we hope that we were able to alleviate some of that stress and anxiety today and help you to focus on the excitement of going to high school next year. This recording will be available on the guidance page of the TDSB site. So if you needed to double back and um, hear some information that you might have missed, please do so. Thank you for joining us. Um, and we hope that you have a really good night. And to the presenters that are here today, um, I will look forward to seeing you again in 15 minutes on our new link for our 7.30 session. So good night, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Also, thank you to Karen Falconer, our Associate Director, for joining us this evening. And I'll look forward to seeing you too, Karen, at our 7.30 session. So good night, everyone. Have a wonderful evening.
Thank you for coming out. Thank you for coming out. Coming out.